So I'm John Kaser. I um, maintain uh, Cyclic Test and RTVal and Tuna and a bunch of other tools uh, used in the real-time world. Um, so this talk is not so much about the results um, or discussion, um, but about um, the RTVal tool and what we've been doing with it lately. Um, so let's see. That's a little plus or little, yeah. Um, so if you don't know what RTVal is, it, it's a Python program, and um, it runs um, a measurement module, which is basically cyclic tests. That's all we've had in the past. Um, and then we try to run a number of loads to stress the system. Um, So uh, there's some uh, loads that are like built into RTVal, and one of them, all it does is compile the kernel with uh, all mod config, which uh, is actually puts a lot of stress on the system. Um, we run Hackbench as well, um, but you can hook up external programs. So we have um, StressNG is one of the loads uh, that you can run. Um, and by the way, if you're looking to contribute to a project, um, the interface from RTVal to StressNG is rather clunky. Um, it'd be a fairly easy and good place uh, if anyone wants to make some contributions. Um, Um, so when we started the project, it was started by uh, Clark Williams and David Somerseth. I took it over when we moved from Python 2.7 into Python 3.x. Um, and uh, it basically ran the load modules and the measurement modules everywhere. Um, and then when customers started running it, uh, they were trying to fine tune things, so they wanted the ability to run loads on some uh, CPUs and measurement uh, modules on other CPUs. So we've had that ability for a long time. Um, so the problem with uh, cyclic test is, is fine, but um, it's rather difficult to hook up uh, the um, tracing to it. Um, you, you can do it with trace command, but it's rather awkward. Um, then uh, Daniel came along with uh, RTLA and it has really superior tracing capabilities. So in the past, it's been very easy to hook up uh, new uh, load modules into RTVal, but we've never had any other uh, uh, measurement modules. So I've now added uh, TimerLat um, as uh, the first other uh, one um, instead of cyclic test. It's gonna probably be the default, well, it will be the default in, in the future. Um, well, that went too far. <clears throat> um, yeah, I just, all right, I'm gonna switch uh, slides here for a sec. All right, how hard is that to see? It's hard to see. Um, um, yeah, let me see if I can do something here. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I don't, we can, we can skip it for discussion purposes, it's okay. If you want to look at those on your own time, all it is is um, an example of uh, if you run um, RT valve with cyclic tests, that's a typical kind of output you get. Did you, uh, switch? Did you switch back to I switched back to it. We can skip those slides. If people want to look at those slides uh, on their own time, it's fine. Um. <laughs> Well, his is fine. It's it's the one that's the, it's on that thing that's all messed up. Uh, shoot. Yeah, because yours it looks fine on this one screen. That's why I'm wondering why your screen is. Uh, 
Switch again. Well, yeah, let me try. Yeah. Let me let me just try another. Like, hopefully, I might just start switching different ones. Ah, well, that's on fine. Yeah. And it's the ongoing or out? Uh, ongoing. There we go. Wait. Okay. And now it's full screen, but. Well, uh, if anyone ever talks up through you. <laughs> so if you just want to look at those other PDFs on your own time, it's just the output of RT Val with cyclic tests and the output with timer lat. Yeah. So you get uh, overall statistics and um, you get them per CPU. Um, the results you're going to see are really bad there because I ran it not on a real-time kernel. Um, but it's just to show you how similar the, uh, the results are with, uh, with timer lat and cyclic tests. Now, TimerLat, um, in addition to superior uh, tracing capabilities, there are some things that are a little different. Um, it outputs statistics per IRQ, per kernel thread, and per user thread. Um, for the first iteration, I've combined these into a, a, a single number again, because that's what our customers will be familiar with, but I'm going to break it out um, again uh, in future iterations. Um, so that's basically all I wanted to show you there, the, the timer lat working. Um, so Red Hat uses, uh, uh, of course, the purpose of RT Val is to, um, to test if you're um, getting good real-time uh, performance. But um, Red Hat uses um, RT Val in order to certify customers' hardware. Um, some hardware is simply not capable of running uh, good, getting re good real-time performance. So um, we run this for I forget how many, how long, something like 24 hours. Um, um, so um, what we're thinking now is machines get uh, bigger and bigger. Um, instead of uh, there's other things you could do with RT Val. Um, sometimes customers don't need the hard uh, real time. They need good real time performance, but they also want their machines to be running other loads. So you can think of load modules as uh, non real time applications. And you can think of measurement modules as real-time applications. So the question is, can we use RT eval to help a customer um, partition their machine up? Um, uh, so with that in mind, we've been slowly adding some uh, new capabilities. Um, one of them was simply um, to run uh, measurement modules on ISIL CPUs um, and that was done by Thomas Shaw. I can't pronounce his last name. Closer. Um, we're going to add CPU sets. I've already got code that uh, works. I just haven't uh, pushed upstream yet um, because uh, ISIL CPUs are technically deprecated by the kernel, <laughs> but they're still widely in use, of course. Um, um, another thing is power saving. So right now, um, with cyclic tests, the, the default is to turn off any power saving. Um, with timer lat, you can, it doesn't do it by default, but you can turn it on. But the question is, uh, could we have uh, some level of power saving and still get um, a good enough uh, level of real-time performance? So we're adding, um, we're adding that capability and we're taking a, a multi approach on it. So um, Tomish is um, trying to add this to uh, RTLA timer lot right now. Um, John Wyatt is putting in Python bindings uh, in CPU power that we can use in our various tools. Um, I had a, um, an intern, Manubov, who um, already achieved uh, this on an OK level with just execing uh, the CPU power tool. Um, then we're adding C groups, and then the final thing that we're working on is containers, and we've already got this going to some degree. So once again, we're trying to emulate what we think customers might want to do. Can you run a container that's uh, running uh, real-time programs um, while other containers are running something else and still get good performance? So that's basically it. <laughs> Any questions or? Oh. When you say uh, I using ISO CPU, uh, does it also include Snowhead full or uh, all the to disable all the kernel noise or just the ISO CPU? Because ISO CPU you can specify several different parameters. 
Um, you wouldn't be able to use RT eval to, um, if I understand you correctly, to set up the ISO CPUs. You'd be using other tools to set that up for you. Um, all we're doing is um, allowing it to be included in um, when you're saying which, uh, where the measurement modules are going to run. Um, we're allowing it to be run on the ISO CPUs. That's all. Hmm. Okay. Um, to my shame, I, I think I missed it recently when I was looking for standardized load scenarios. I think we also discussed this. So do you, do you say that, that it, it, it eval is, is kind of providing this comparable load scenario? Let's say I want to reproduce the setup that someone else was doing because you see always how people are measuring the real time, but you usually don't specify in details how they were putting the load up. And that may make a difference, obviously. Yeah, we're, we're simulating loads by doing and, and how stable is that then? It, I mean, it, how, how comparable is that load? It's very stable, but I can't compare it. I mean, we're running this for, you can run it for a week at a time, but mm. I mean, I can't compare it to a real customer's application. It's <laughs> That's clear, yeah. yeah. Well, if there's loads, by the way, if there's loads that you could think of. I mean, I think one thing that's pretty nice is if, like, I mean, you said you want to include to get the stress NG and stuff like that. But what actually would be nice is if you could just say, hey, just specify a load and it just runs off the load. And it, I mean, is there a way to do that? Well, it's very easy to add loads to RT eval right now. But by modifying the code, right? Um, by modifying the code. No, we don't so I'm have, is, I know what you're not, saying. Yes. We don't have something uh, right now, a mechanism that can just run automatically where you specify the name of your load and run it, but that might be added in the future too. Yeah. Um, I assume that you're uh, in the report, that's final report that's produced, you're capturing a bunch of the metadata about the load and possibly about the machine and stuff? Yes, de definitely. Um, you can see that in the report in the other PDF that didn't show up very well on the screen. Yeah, the, you get a, a ton of information about um, the machine itself and then um, the results of running uh, whichever your measurement module was. Um, by the way, now that we've added timer lat, um, within RTLA there are other uh, kinds of measurements that can be done and as well as there's other measurement uh, tools so we could potentially add more measurement modules in the future. Um, one thing uh, Yuri said to me, um, I was thinking of adding uh, one of the deadline tests from cyclic tests, and he said, well, just run timer lat with the deadline parameter on it. So, like, there's many things we can do uh, as well now. Uh, when you are isolating the CPUs with the new C groups mechanism and then marking certain containers or certain processes within the containers as real time, are you doing this dynamically or this is just static uh, scripts like um, initialization scripts, like how is the whole pipeline running? Or like at, ro at the RT eval runtime, mm -hmm. yeah, at that moment. Okay, and in the containers, like some with RT tasks and some without RT tasks, and is there like identification mechanisms for that, or like some containers are allowed, for example, to have RT tasks, and some containers are not even allowed to have RT tasks, and so on. Um, yeah, well, this is all undergoing development right now, so. Okay. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Anything else? We still have time. I almost threw it to you. Let's put your hand up. <laughs> think, do you also control the IRQ affinity from RT Eval, or is that out of scope? Or? No, that's an interesting idea, though. <laughs> okay. So just as you put in there, everything, just as I met it, you know, besides containers, do you want to run it also within K KVM? Um, <laughs> that is not on my list of things to do right now. Um, okay. But I am always open to contributions from everybody. Uh, cool, cool. So. Uh, cool, I guess I'm nice student. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Uh, to follow on with the, the question earlier about uh, making the uh, RTE a little bit more representative of customer applications, um, I know you talked before about how the measurement uh, units are more like a real-time process and the, the loads are more like a non-real-time, but I wonder if there's a way to 
um, have the loads be a little bit more like real-time tasks that are on the system uh, in terms of the, them having their own deadlines and priorities uh, to simulate more something more like a customer system. Um, I, I don't see why you couldn't do that. So um, wait, I just want yeah. to make sure I understand the question. Too. Okay. okay so, so basically the question there is um, to have like your load actually be RT as well. So basically you're going, because that almost sounds like an OS noise or type of, because it's OS noise or, do, or. OS noise is, uh, or OS channel. noise is uh, mimicking like always running tasks yeah. instead of the periodic one. Okay. One thing that, I know, that there is this RT app uh, uh, application which uh, you can specify essentially your composition using a JSON uh, file. Uh, it's, of course, it's synthetic, but you can specify, okay, this task is only CPU specific, this task does I.O. Maybe, uh, I guess the, the tricky bit is to come, I mean, to translate from an actual thing, an actual application run by a customer to a synthetic thing that reasonably mm -hmm. uh, it's close to that thing, but the application is there, so maybe you could try to use that. I don't remember which one, but I know that there are uh, a few different uh, file system uh, test benchmarks have uh, loadable modules that with, with customer loads, workloads, so I don't know if it's I mean, so you might, like, if you pick the right one, I don't know if it's like IOZone or one of the other ones, but uh, if you pick the right one and made that one of the modules, you might get a bunch of workloads for free or something. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, any interest in, in adding also not only the latency when you are woken up by a timer, but also maybe when you get an IPC, for example, container to container communications, to, or is that like completely out of scope for a tool like RT about now? If I understand what you're saying, you're talking about uh, a different kind of measurement there? Yes, instead of only like, you know, wake up time, it's just you have a timer and you measure, you know, delay, but also, you know, like you get another process sending you something over a pipe, a five or network, local network, you know, and just measure how long it takes for you to be woken up and do, we react to that. So. Yeah, um, that's not currently on my list of things to do, but I think we even have some tools in the cyclic test, uh, in the RT test suite that, that do something like that. It's not on my list of things to add to RT Val right now. I miss the old days back in 2004 when we were working on real time. I actually, uh, where we had the power, uh, the, what's it called, the uh, printer port. Uh, I used to find the pins and take a paper clip and put the paper clip in the two pins. And that way I could signal one pin and it would trigger the other. And I used to, that, was, I, that was my measurement that I would use. <laughs> that would be great to add. No. Anything else? <laughs> uh, you got anything else you want to say? Or? Going once. Uh, going twice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.